Pouco deve agar. Só. Tá bem. Tá Porque bem. Falaremos a, possibilidade, a possibilidade que eles uh, percebem uhum. quando fala uhum. deve agar. Uhum. Só para isso. Tá bem. Tá bem. Obrigado. Obrigado. There are only some 14 persons on stage. Do we start or do we wait for a minute? That's your call. <laughs> you are the boss. I am yes. the boss. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. We will start now. It is 15, um, sorry, 17.32 by our, by our time, 5.32. It must be 9.02 in, in Brazil. So we'll start with the formal program. Um, a very good evening to all from India present here. And a very good morning to our friends in Brazil who are at nine in the morning. Uh, Vidya Vikas Mandal's Govind Ramna Kare College of Law in the state of Goa, India, is delighted to host this international webinar in association with the University of Fortaleza in Ceará, Brazil. As we all know, the coronavirus pandemic has affected all of us very badly and thrown normal or regular academic life out of gear. In this context, it was timely to organize a webinar on the topic social responsibility of universities in times of pandemic necessary measures. To make these deliberations meaningful, we have amongst us eminent speakers. There is a very small change in the delegate for the inaugural address since Professor Varun Sani, Vice Chancellor of the University of Goa, has not been able to join us as he is indisposed. Instead, we have a person of equal eminence with education, including higher education, and in particular, legal education, very close to his heart. And that is Mr. Nitin Kunkolyakar. We also have experts in higher education from both the institutions, that is Govind Ramnath Kari College of Law, and the University of Fortaleza, namely Professor Randall Pompeu, uh, Professora Gina Pompeu uh, from the UNIFOR, Mr. Sri Harsha Inavali, who is an assistant professor in the Kare College of Law. Muito bom dia aos nossos amigos de Brasil, Vidya Vikas Mandal e Govind Ramnath Kare College of Law, no estado de Goa, Índia, tem o prazer hospedar este webinar internacional em associação com a Universidade de Fortaleza, no Ceará, Brasil. Como todos sabemos, a pandemia do coronavírus afetou a todos nós e prejudicou a vida acadêmica normal ou regular. Neste contexto, foi oportuno organizar um webinar sobre o tema Responsabilidade Social das Universidades em Tempos de Pandemia, Medidas Necessárias, para tornar essas deliberações significativas, temos entre nós oradores eminentes a uma pequena mudança num delegado para o discurso inaugural, uma vez que o professor Varun Sani, o vice-chanceler da Universidade de Goa, não pode se juntar a nós porque está indisposto. Em vez disso, temos uma pessoa de igual eminência com educação, incluindo educação superior e, em particular, educação jurídica, perto do seu coração, Sr. Nitin Kunkolekar. Temos especialistas em ensino superior das ambas instituições, Unifor 
e GRQCL. Nós temos professor Randal Pompeu e professora Gina Pompeu da Unifor e senhor Sri Harsha Inavali da Govind Ramna Kare College uh, of Law. Agora, vamos começar um programa. We have amongst us for the inaugural address Sri Nitin Konkolekar for his eminent place in education that he holds. He is for us at Kare College of Law, the president of Vidya Vikas Mandal. He is also the chairman of the governing council of the Govind Ramnath Kare College of Law. At the national level, he is the uh, director of Sinegra AMS Limited. He is the president of MATE, that is Manufacturers Association of Information Technology. He is the director of several corporate areas. He is, he is the past director of several. He holds key assignments of different areas and he is the best person who could substitute the vice chancellor of Goa University. So we present before you Mr. Nitin Kunkolekar. Welcome, sir. And the word is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Saba. Um, thank you for uh, thinking of me the last moment. And uh, it was really a pleasure that uh, I could get an opportunity of addressing such people of eminence. My deepest regards to Professor Dr. Gina, Professor Dr. Pindal, Professor Dr. Saba Silva, Sri Harsh Inavali, who are going to speak at this occasion. My deepest respect to all those audience who have agreed to join and be benefited richly with this uh, webinar. The experts are going to talk on a very, very important and a very crucial topic. How does university plan to manage this pandemic situation? How should they do that? And what could be done? <clears throat> this pandemic is one of the greatest challenge of this century, or at least in our uh, living, we can say. But this is the first pandemic wherein technology also has come to the rescue. World over, we have seen most of the universities were shaken up when the news of pandemic started coming up. It started with China. I could see most of the Chinese universities getting completely nervous, didn't know how to handle the situation, especially in the first two to three months. And later on, we have seen across the world, most of the universities and the academic institutions were in confusion. So my first thought that came to my mind was, what is the role of the universities? Universities are supposed to be at the helm of thought leadership, thought of research, thought of at the leadership of simulations. We should be in a position to understand these challenges much in advance. Have we done this? Most of the universities have failed to do this. As it was becoming clear that this pandemic is going to stay long, people were deeply waiting for the vaccines to come. Are we on a right path or are we in a, are we still in a state of confusions? What are we exactly doing? Let me tell you, still most of the universities across the globe, maybe the situation in US or China or most developed countries could be a little different, but I've seen mostly in Asian countries, the situation is quite confusing. They don't know where it, where it is heading to. People don't know whether they should be writing off this year. Everyone feels that everyone is awaiting when the colleges and the institutions would start, whether it would start in January, whether it would start in February, whether there will be extension of academic year beyond March. So even after nine months, 
most of the leadership in academics are still deliberating i think universities now should take a leadership universities should take the reins of academic society or academic uh, sector in their hands most of the countries it is the health officials or the enforcement authorities or the administration is taking a call on how everyone should behave but nothing much is coming from universities all across except very very few areas i won't say uh, not many countries but most of the local regions maybe universities are playing a role but in india especially we are saying that the leadership to lead this sector is not come up as yet it's time that the university leadership takes charge of academic sector and tell the government that this is the way forward we are prepared to accept the challenge we will drive this particular aspect we will deal with pandemic this is the new normal we will follow we will not believe in writing up of the academic year see this every year has become very crucial some people just tell you write off one year it's not possible it's going to create a massive impact on uh, the population that is in waiting to take up the next year everyone is in a race is going to disturb there is going to be a major impact on the socio economic aspects of every nation the travel is impacted the tourism is impacted the world trade and services are impacted people are facing challenges i think somewhere we as universities need to come at their rescue and i think this is where i would look forward to a new normal at universities rather than being in a very reactive mode should now take a very very strong proactive mode and take the leadership forward now there are two type of uh, academic uh, courses one which are classroom oriented like commerce or maybe general arts or uh, basic uh, theoretical courses that you could manage through technology or e classes or webinars and so on you can even have technology enabled exams but what happens to the professions like medical education high end engineering education you can't you need to go through practical experiences practical simulations have we done enough on technology to substitute the physical classes no we haven't done so i think this is where we need to look forward to opportunities pandemic yes it has created major impact on every sector but believe in me pandemic also has brought in highest opportunities that never existed in the past there are so many sectors the pandemic has only told us now you think differently you think wisely you think from a future forget about what was happening in the past and i think this is where a great role needs to be played by universities and we need to prepare universities towards that so i think uh, i know everyone is very eager to listen to the eminent uh, personalities and academicians i would again thank uh, you all for the patient hearing i would thank professor saba and the organizers for giving me this opportunity i wish you all the best and i look forward to more such engagements of our institution vidya vikas mandal and my team would give all our great support to every such initiative and i think we also need to take up some more topics of global interest which can benefit everybody in the world thank you thank you again and wish you all the best thank you thank you very much mr nitin kongolekar for those insightful thoughts um i must thank you additionally for this last minute uh, request and yet such a very effective speech in recognizing the needs global needs to meet up with such challenges uh, i understand that um, we have learned lessons from the corona virus pandemic but let us take these lessons forward 
so that we can meet any future challenges where physical classrooms become a problem or come in the way of education. So I now proceed with the next item on the agenda. We have with us Professor Randal Martinsh Pompeyu. I will first introduce him and thereafter I will request him to address us. So we have Mr. Professor Randal Martinsh Pompeyu, who is a PhD in management from the University of Tras Os Montes and Alto Douro in Portugal in the year 2011. His master's in applied informatics from the University of Fortaleza in Brazil in 2001. He's a postgraduate in informatics from the University of Fortaleza in Brazil in the year 1999. He's the vice rector of extension and university community and full professor of the postgraduate program in business administration at the University of Fortaleza, member and Northeast Regional Coordinator of the Extension Forum of Higher Education Institutions. He takes courses in the areas of corporate social responsibility and social responsibility of universities, which is precisely the topic today. He is the coordinator of the inter-institutional doctorate between the University of Fortaleza in Ceará and the University Center for Higher Education of Amazons in Manaus, in Amazonas. Uh, Professor Doutor é gestão pela Universidade de Traz os Montes e Alto Douro em Portugal, mestre em informática aplicada pela Universidade de Fortaleza no Brasil, pós-graduado em informática pela Universidade de Fortaleza no Brasil, vice-reitor da extensão e comunidade universitária e professor titular do programa de pós-graduação em administração de empresas da Universidade de Fortaleza. Membro e coordenador regional nordeste do Fórum de Extensão das Instituições de Ensino Superior, Ministro Cursos da área, na área da Responsabilidade Social das Empresas e Responsabilidade Social das Universidades, Coordenador do Doutorado Interinstitucional de Inter entre as Fortaleza, Unifor Fortaleza e Centro Universitário de Ensino Superior do Amazonas, em Manaus, Amazonas. Over to you, Professor Randall. The word is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friend, Professor Dr. Sabala Silva. And I would like to thank the invitation to be here in moment so important so we can discuss a little bit about the universities, the responsibility of social universities, and the innovation during this time of pandemic. É, eu queria cumprimentar os professores aqui presentes, em nome do professor Nietzsche, que me antecedeu, e I'd like to uh, present, make my presentation in Portuguese, but my slides I prepare in English, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me, feel free to ask me, and I'll be more than glad to, have, to answer you. É, então, eu vou fazer a minha apresentação em português e eu fiz os slides em inglês, para que não haja problema de compreensão, e eu espero que seja assim. É, professor Sabá, é, o senhor está vendo a minha apresentação já? Está aparecendo? Sim, aparece, professor, aparece. Pronto, então... Sim, obrigado. É, obrigado. Então, é, primeiro, eu gostaria, professor Sabá, de cumprimentá-lo e parabenizar pela ideia. É um momento muito importante que nós estamos vivendo. É um, um momento sui generis. É, como o meu antecessor falou, é o um maior desafio do século 21 que nós estamos vivendo, essa pandemia do, do novo coronavírus, Covid-19. E, portanto, as universidades e o mundo teve que se adaptar a essa nova realidade. Então, eu trouxe aqui é, alguns fatos é, importantes que a Universidade de Fortaleza tem promovido durante esse, esse período de pandemia, 
com algumas inovações. E, é, mas antes, eu gostaria de fazer um, uma breve história, contar uma breve história, até para os nossos é, colegas da Índia poderem situar e entender geograficamente onde nós estamos. Então, o Brasil foi descoberto, por acaso, pelos portugueses, num acidente de percurso, em, no ano de 1500, que deveriam estar indo aí para a Índia e acabaram descobrindo o Brasil. E nós tivemos o um período de Brasil colônia, um, um, um país colonial, uma colônia portuguesa, de 1500 até 1808, quando a família real veio para o Brasil. Então, de 1808 até 1889, nós tínhamos, nós tínhamos o período imperial aqui no, no país, e depois de 1889 até os dias de hoje, a nossa Brasil República. Então, o Brasil é o maior país da América do Sul, situado no, na América do Sul, dividido em 26 estados, é uma federação, é uma república federativa, e que temos uma população de mais de 210 milhões de habitantes, e a sua maioria, 51%, é feminino. É a língua oficial é o, é o português, e nós estamos dentro aí do índice de desenvolvimento humano, é, com o índice 0,79%, o que nos faz, é, eu vou falar um pouquinho mais na frente, um país de contrastes. É, o Brasil é dividido em regiões, o Ceará, especificamente, está na região nordeste, uma região que é privilegiada pela natureza, mas que nós temos é, uma gran, um grande problema de seca. Nós vivemos, nós estamos numa área altamente seca no país, com a falta de chuva. Uma população de quase 9 milhões de habitantes, o estado do Ceará, e que a sua capital, que é esse pontinho vermelho aí, é a cidade de Fortaleza. Cidade de Fortaleza, com quase 3 milhões de habitantes, é a quinta cidade do país, foi fundada é, em 1649, 1649 e que tem, portanto, é, uma posição estratégica relacionada ao Nordeste do Brasil. E, como eu falei, o Brasil é um país de contraste. Nós vivemos esse grande problema de poucas pessoas que tem muito dinheiro e muitas pessoas com pouco dinheiro. Então, é um país das, dos contrastes, é um país das contradições. E que, para amenizar esse gap, para diminuir esse distanciamento social, a universidade possui... A educação é, um, é um, uma ferramenta indispensável para essa transformação por meio do capital humano. E a universidade, na sua vez, é o assume um papel importante de promover a educação profissional, mas a educação de cidadãos, pessoas que conheçam, sejam conscientes do seu papel quanto profissionais e que conheçam ah, o seu entorno e as suas diferenças sociais. A Universidade de Fortaleza, eu queria falar rapidamente, é, ela foi criada em 1973, é uma universidade mantida por uma fundação, Fundação Edson Queiroz, que, como vocês, está comemorando 50 anos de criação no próximo ano, em 1900, em, ela foi criada em 1971, a fundação, e hoje a universidade possui mais de 16 mil alunos. Tivemos o prazer de receber aqui o professor Sabá, é, no mês de maio do ano passado, 2019, participando de um congresso, de um encontro da lusofonia, que foi desenvolvido aqui na universidade. Então, a universidade, ela quando foi criada, em 73, ela foi idealizada para diminuir ou para aumentar as possibilidades de educação superior no Estado, que até então não tínhamos muitas oportunidades. E a universidade, desde a sua criação, ela foi uma universidade voltada para os projetos de extensão, os projetos com a comunidade, os projetos de responsabilidade social. Então, hoje, nós temos, na vice-reitoria de extensão, da qual eu, eu, eu lidero, temos uma equipe responsável somente por projetos de responsabilidade social, para diminuir, então, amenizar esses impactos sociais por meio desses projetos, para que os nossos alunos possam é, 
está participando desse processo, conhecendo a realidade e amenizando, portanto, esse gap social que nós temos no país. Mas durante o, a, a pandemia, então, nós tivemos, é, aqui no Brasil, nós temos o ano escolar igual ao ano civil. Portanto, o ano escolar começa em fevereiro e vai até o final do ano, em dezembro. E as aulas começaram em fevereiro e em março nós tivemos a pandemia e a suspensão total de todos os projetos e todas as atividades, como aconteceu no mundo, aconteceu aqui também. E aí eu queria trazer para cá, para esse fórum, dois projetos que nós tivemos em especial atenção durante a pandemia, que foram o projeto da Escola de Educação em Holanda Queiroz e o Centro de Formação Profissional, que são dois projetos de responsabilidade social que são desenvolvidos na universidade. Primeiro, o projeto é, da Escola de Aplicação em Holanda Queiroz, é um, um projeto que abriga mais de 540 crianças, crianças que vêm de comunidades carentes, crianças que são é, pre, não, não, é, desprivilegiadas socialmente, e que, portanto, tem aqui educação de primeiro nível, de primeiro, é, com toda a atenção, para essas crianças que aqui estudam. Desde 1982, essa escola já recebeu mais de 30 mil é, crianças, e então, no mês, no ano de 2020, como eu expliquei, 540 crianças foram matriculadas, e aí nós tivemos o total suspensão das atividades de aula. E é importante dizer que para essas crianças, é, eles recebem material escolar, eles recebem a educação de qualidade com os professores, eles recebem toda a tecnologia possível para a educação, e eles também recebem alimentação. Essa alimentação que é muito importante para a vida dessas crianças. Então, durante a pandemia, nós tivemos, então, que suspender o método de, de trabalho com essas crianças, e aí nós capacitamos, resolvemos, então, dar aulas online. Como a Universidade de Fortaleza fez na graduação e na pós-graduação, nós fizemos também nesse projeto de responsabilidade social. Então, os professores da escola foram treinados, foram capacitados para essas aulas online. E as crianças tiveram a inclusão digital, ou seja, tiveram acesso gratuito à internet, por meio de celulares que nós distribuímos para essas crianças, e aí elas, dentro, nas suas próprias casas, continuaram a ter as aulas que elas teriam presencialmente. É, não foi uma experiência fácil, foi uma experiência que nós tivemos que nos adaptar a essa no nossa realidade, essa nova realidade. As crianças tiveram também que se adaptar a esse novo sistema de aula. Os pais foram bastante colaborativos, ajudaram bastante nesse projeto de enfrentamento é, por meio é, da tecnologia que nos ajudou. Né? Então, as aulas foram totalmente online durante todo esse período, e também, durante esse período, nós distribuímos os alimentos que as crianças receberiam presencialmente, eles receberam para levar para suas casas. Portanto, uma ajuda para essas crianças por meio dessas cestas de alimentação, de alimentos que eles receberam. Então, aqui nós temos fotos dos pais recebendo esse mensalmente nós demos, nós doamos, fizemos essa entrega, não só de material escolar, de todo o material que as crianças precisariam utilizar, mas também é, de o, alimentação e de toda a atenção que as crianças estivessem precisando. Né? Então, esse foi um grande projeto de responsabilidade social que a Universidade de Fortaleza teve que se adaptar para esse enfrentamento da pandemia. E todos esses professores foram, estão sendo testados quase que semanalmente, por meio de testes rápidos, e quando o professor, quando se, quando se é, percebe algum caso de COVID, a, o professor ou o membro é afastado automaticamente e o setor pessoal se encarrega de 
cuidar desse membro, desse professor. Então, nós tivemos pouquíssimos casos de Covid aqui na escola e tivemos pouquíssimos casos quase que inexistentes com as crianças. Outro projeto que eu gostaria de trazer para cá é o projeto do Centro de Formação Profissional. O Centro de Formação Profissional tem como objetivo fornecer, capacitar as pessoas que não tiveram acesso à educação a curso de, de capacitação profissional. Então, esse centro foi criado desde 2002 e sempre esses cursos aconteceram, mais de 36 mil pessoas já fizeram esses cursos, já foram capacitadas, mas sempre os cursos aconteciam no campus. Né? Então, durante a pandemia, durante o, a partir do mês de março, nós tivemos que suspender todas as aulas presenciais e, a partir daí, nós começamos a reestruturar o Centro de Formação Profissional e fazer com que todas as aulas fossem ofertadas online. E aí, uma nova metodologia de ensino, uma nova metodologia de trabalho, foi aplicar, foram aplicadas aos professores, aos instrutores e, a, obviamente, os, os alunos desses cursos. Então, só agora, durante a pandemia, nós ofertamos mais de 1.800 lugares, mais de 1.800 vagas, em todos esses cursos aqui que nós ofertamos, cursos básicos de formação, de capacitação profissional, como curso de secretária, curso de garçom, curso de técnicos em computação, curso de organização de eventos, é, manipulação de alimentos, assistentes de cozinhas e restaurantes, enfim, cursos é, de, de, de 80 horas de duração, mas que possam fazer uma capacitação profissional para as pessoas que não tiveram acesso à educação formal. Então, aqui nós vemos uma aula acontecendo, com todos os alunos é, presentes aí, utilizando o, o software, e essas aulas aconteceram, cada curso aconteceu três vezes por semana, e todo o material que foi distribuído para esses alunos também foi transformado em material é, e-books, material, material digital. Bom, tivemos várias outras ações aqui na universidade é, com relação à pandemia, durante a pandemia. Uma delas foi a testagem de Covid também, de fazer Covid-19 aqui no campus, Durante o mês de julho, nós testamos mais de mil alunos, professores e staffs da, da universidade que estavam presentes aqui. Nós tivemos um projeto de pesquisa muito interessante e que, inclusive, recebeu prêmios e foi bastante utilizado para, pelos hospitais, que foi a criação desse respirador artificial que, que ajudou muitos pacientes internos em, em em hospitais, a ter um respirador artificial é, melhor, foi um projeto de pesquisa, e tivemos também a distribuição gratuita de máscaras em massa para a população. Então, é, várias ações, como eu falei, foram feitas, é, como no, o meu antecessor falou, e aqui eu repito, é, foi o maior desafio, está sendo o maior desafio do século 21 para nós educadores, para nós profissionais, mas é, aprendemos muito. Nesses nove meses, nós aprendemos muito com todas as necessidades que enfrentamos, todas as situações que apareceram. E aí eu lembro aquele pensamento do Darwin, que sempre me faz é, pensar no momento desse, que é o seguinte, não é o mais forte que sobrevive, nem o mais inteligente, mas o que melhor se adapta às mudanças. Então, é, isso aí foi a frase de Darwin, né, que eu acho que cada vez mais ela está atual nas nossas vidas. Mais uma vez, professor Sabar, eu quero agradecer, parabenizar pela ideia e dizer que nós, a Universidade de Fortaleza, sempre parceira do College of Law, é, estamos aqui de braços abertos para recebê-los. Pena que eu não pude ir aí estar com vocês presencialmente, mas eu espero que em breve nós possamos estar juntos outra vez. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, professor Andal. Uh, 
I am very thankful to you for the experiences that you shared about the University of Fortaleza. For the benefit of our audience, uh, University of Fortaleza and Govind Ramnath Kare College of Law have signed a memorandum of understanding. And uh, we could not proceed with any activity uh, because of the pandemic. So what better topic than this topic to start our activities online uh, is what we thought. Uh, I would like to, for the benefit of the uh, viewers who are from India or who have not fully understood what Professor Randall was saying, he was basically telling us about the university's social responsibility through inclusive and social innovation, contributing to facing the pandemic of this new coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, by forming social capital and creating opportunities and technological solutions. He was explaining about the projects of the University of Fortaleza maintained by the Edson Kairos Foundation, which is a non-profit institution located in the northeast of Brazil, which promotes actions that seek to effect the emancipation of people by stimulating social prosperity and protection of the planet. He was mentioning that during this year, UNIFOR promotes projects to combat pandemic in the areas of education, professional training, and technology development education, which was capable of mitigating harmful impacts through science. He was mentioning that among the projects, the Yolanda Application School stands out. This school, maintained by the same foundation, which is in the period of social isolation, promotes early childhood education for a large number of 540 students at risk with synchronous classes, simultaneous classes, provision of food to the families and school attendance, which makes it possible for learning to be achieved to the fullest. The COVID-19 pandemic also requires changes in employment and work relationships, including professional qualifications. Uh, in this regard, Professor Randall was saying that the University of Fortaleza, with the Center of Professional Training, improves teaching methodologies to meet the needs of changing economic environment. Thus, this university social responsibility of theirs can become a model for tackling poverty and social ex exclusion in combating the effects of COVID-19 uh, with the potential to transform and provide welfare, social and economic development for the community. Uh, Professor Randal, there is a question which one of the participants uh, has been asking. Uh, he is asking, this is uh, Moses Pinto, he is asking you, what were the challenges, desafios, um, in overcoming delivering of online formative courses online where there is requirement of personal interaction as the final outcome. Can you please answer us that? Yes, sure. With a pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, you ask me what are the changes involved in the outcome? Challenges. The challenges. The okay, the challenges. We had a lot of a lot of ch challenges, several challenges. But I think that uh, the most important was to make the adaptation of the courses, the presential courses, the, uh, they are, those courses are very technological and they are very formative, uh, professional courses. So they have a lot of uh, presential experiences. So I think the most difficult uh, was to transform all the, the alternatives for the presential uh, training to the online uh, training. 
For example, we have several courses like uh, training for waiters. So they have they have to learn how to be a good waiter, how to serve in a, in a restaurant, how to make uh, experience in practice. So the most difficult for us was the most, the challenger, the, one of the challenges that we have was to transform these experiences and, and in online experiences, in online uh, situations and online uh, training. But I think that uh, for for uh, Jimmy uh, get lower uh, challengers, we have uh, the the good wealth that everyone wants to participate and everyone wants to study. So uh, we have a lot. Uh, we don't have, for example, any absence. All the students were present in every classes. So it shows that everyone needs to be uh, occupied, need to, wants to be trained, and wants to follow the courses. I think this one, this one was very positive, was very positive for uh, Jimmy uh, lower the, the, the challenges. But if you want to, uh, uh, Moses, Pin Moses Pinto, if you want more information, please send, send your email in the, in the chat and we can send you some examples, some examples that the materials like ebooks that we had to transform every material that the students had on ebook uh, materials and we can send to you to see uh, uh, the difficult that we have in, in these terms. Yes. Thank you, Professor Randall, for the detailed response and for your offer to be of um, assistance to uh, any further queries that may arise. I cannot see any more questions right away. But what I was thinking is after we finish with the second speaker, we could still take questions if there are any for you. All right. So I now. Sure with our second speaker, who will be speaking on maintenance and regulation of standards in higher education during pandemic times. Now, the importance of his speech is more related to the rules and regulations that are there in the Indian system. Uh, what I would uh, want is uh, for those who would like to uh, know something about what he is saying in the Portuguese language, at the end, I would have uh, given a short summary of what he said. I would like to now introduce Professor uh, Sri Harsha Inavali. Uh, Professor Inavali is the head of department teaching at the bachelor's and master's degree program in law. He holds a master's degree in law with specialization in international law from the University of Mysore in the state of Karnataka in India. He has registered for a doctorate program in law at the research center of Kare College of Law, which is affiliated to Goa University. He has a teaching experience of 19 years. He is a member of the board of studies in law of the Goa University and a member of the Legal Advisory Committee of the Goa State Biodiversity Board. Professor Inavali, a Professor Auxiliar, e chef the department, lecionando nos cursos de bacharelado e mestrado em Direito. Ele tem mestrado em Direito com especialização em Direito Internacional pela Universidade de Mysore, em Karnataka, da Índia. Ele se inscreveu para um programa de doutorado em Direito no Centro de Pesquisa da Care College of Law, afiliado à Universidade de Goa. Ele tem experiência de ensino há nove anos. Ele é membro do Conselho de Estudos em Direito, Universidade de Goa, Ele é membro do Comitê Consultivo 
jurídico do Conselho de Biodiversidade do Estado de Goa. Uh, professor Inavoli, uh, the word is yours. You may speak. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, respected uh, Mr. Nitin Kunkalikar, Chairman of the Governing Council of the College, uh, professors, officials from uh, University of uh, Fortaleza, Brazil. Good morning, sirs. Esteemed uh, colleagues from the uh, college and uh, Indian participants, good evening to all. Uh, first of all, I have to thank the organizers for uh, giving me an opportunity to be the resource person for this uh, international webinar. Special thanks to our uh, principal, Dr. Uh, Saba De Silva, who has uh, given me an opportunity to be the resource person in this particular uh, seminar. The topic I have uh, taken for today's uh, webinar is maintenance and regulation of standards in higher education during pandemic times, the Indian approach. I have classified my whole uh, presentation into five parts. First is introduction. Second is uh, teaching learning during pandemic. UGC regulations, guidelines in relation to examinations. Maintenance of quality and standard in higher education. And finally, the conclusion. As you know very well, education is important for the overall development of the society. The development of a society may be determined by the quality of education imparted and the level of learners. Quality in education is a very important in the present era of globalization. In India, efforts were taken for maintenance of standards of higher education with the establishment of University Grants Commission, it's called as UGC. And this is the body which controls higher education in India. This UGC sets rules reg and regulations, issues guidelines for the smooth functioning of universities and institutions of higher education in the Indian society. The power to make regulation in relation to defining the minimum standard of instructions for the grant of any degree by any university. In addition to that, we have uh, other professional recognizing bodies for professional programs like uh, we have uh, Medical Council of India for medical education, All India Council for technical education for uh, technical education and Bar Council of India, for example, for regulating the legal education in India. COVID-19 pandemic has affected the education system in India, leading to closure of schools, colleges, universities, and other institutes of learning during lockdown. Even after lifting of the lockdown, the regular conduct of classroom lectures in the offline mode could not or did not become a reality. Institutions continue to follow online classes and evaluation in its teaching learning process. The major issue is to maintain quality and standard in higher education during this pandemic, especially the assessment of the students and the evaluation of their learning level. Teaching and learning during pandemic, what happened in our society and uh, what is happening? Here, technology played a very important role in teaching learning during a pandemic. The universities and colleges have adopted method of online classes through Google Classroom, Cisco WebEx meeting, Zoom, etc. The institutions with proper resources 
could adopt this method but it was a challenge for institutions without proper infrastructure and resources at the relevant time in spite of lack of proper infrastructure many educational institutions forced its faculty members to take online lectures to complete the syllabus students from rural areas and remote places had to suffer because of lack of required facilities students from poor economic background become the victims of this particular system the university university grants commission its guidelines on examination and academic calendar in view of covid-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown has emphasized that the need for promoting online learning and suggest for virtual classroom and video conferencing facilities training of faculty on these platforms preparation of e content and practice by faculty to complete their 25% of teaching through online mode in post covid situation as well it is not only during pandemic even post pandemic the teachers required to have 25% of uh, their teaching through online mode in order to contain the spread of covid-19 pandemic in the educational institutions and to ensure continuity in teaching learning process the ministry of education and ugc issued several guidelines advisers directives to the universities and colleges including one to impart online education by making best use of resources through all the communications made by the ministry of education and the ugc it was emphasized to continue with the teaching learning process using online modes such as google classroom cisco webex meeting youtube streaming open educational resources swayam that is study webs of uh, active learning for young aspiring minds that is swayam platform then uh, swayam prabha available on doordarshan that is a uh, uh, channel of the government virtual labs free and open resource software for education application of social, spoken uh, tutorials national digital library electronic journals etc so these could be used for the purpose of uh, learning and enhancing the knowledge not only during pandemic even after pandemic which will help the learners to enhance knowledge and uh, gain more uh, certificates or courses in uh, different disciplines ugc guidelines for reopening the universities and colleges post lockdown due to covid-19 pandemic this was the guideline issued by guidelines issued by the ugc in november 2020 stressing on the role of teacher and it emphasizes that every teacher should prepare a detailed teaching plan for the subjects taught by him or her including timetable class size mode of delivery assignments theory practical continuous evaluation and semester evaluation etc teachers should also keep themselves updated with the latest teaching learning methods and availability of e resources this shall help to enhance the quality in teaching learning in online mode also while analyzing the merits and demerits of e learning and online classes we can observe that the online classes have become an alternative for traditional classroom lectures in the present period of pandemic students from remote places may have access to online classes online lectures from their homes thereby avoiding entry into the places of public gathering where we say social distancing has to be maintained so it avoids the individuals students to get into a place where uh, uh, crowded with population 
they can utilize their time in learning more things and more courses this helped in developing self discipline among the student community e learning both teachers and students uh, made both teachers and students technology friendly and creation of more learning resources but the disadvantages are concerned here we can see that it is difficult for institutions with the lack of infrastructure and resources to have online classes the resources required for live streaming of the classes lectures or online classes some of the institutions with because of uh, poor economic condition very very difficult for them to cope up with that the teachers who are accustomed to traditional method of chalk and talk chalk and board what is say and lack of lack of computer knowledge may find it difficult to adopt the new method the improper internet facilities posed a big challenge for online learning in addition to that practical subjects need hands on experience online classes cannot be a substitute for classroom teaching for example i was being law college i have taken the example of law uh, legal education and curriculum imparting of uh, uh, legal knowledge among the students in the law colleges in legal education the theory subjects could be taught through online mode but clinical trials require practical exposure clinical legal education being part and parcel of legal education the students require proper training through legal aid clinics court visit internship lok adalts etc online classes webinars online internship could be considered as only an arrangement for the benefit and convenience of the students during pandemic we can say that it's a stop gap arrangement or only for the purpose to cope up with the present uh, situation of pandemic it is also very difficult to assess the learning level of students through online examination students may resort to cheating impersonation and may use external resources this may lead to malpractice in examination it is also difficult to have proctoring during online examinations second part of discussion here is the guidelines issued by the universities grant commission for the conducting of exams and conducting of classes in the month of april ugc guidelines on examination and academic calendar for the universities in the view of covid-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown was issued by the universities grants commission and in that they stressed on adoption of alternative and simplified modes of and methods of examination to complete the process in a shorter period of time universities may adopt efficient and innovative modes of examination by reducing the time of examination generally we have 3 hours exam they stressed that it could be 2 hours exam university may conduct terminal intermediate semester and examinations through offline or online mode as per their ordinance rules and regulations scheme of examination observing the guide guidelines of social distancing and keeping in view the support system available with them ensuring fair opportunity to all the students so examination has to be conducted either through offline or online mode university is grants commission stresses for conducting of examination by any of these methods and it is it is made very flexible for the institutions to adopt the method which is convenient taking the geographical conditions or uh, the situation prevailed at that particular point of time in the in the month of uh, 
July 2020, it revised the regulation and uh, uh, it came to the conclusion that in view of the emerging situation related to COVID-19 pandemic in India, it's important to safeguard the principles of health, safety, fair and equal opportunity for students. At the same time, it is very crucial to ensure academic credibility, career opportunity and pre future progress of students globally. Academic evaluation of students is very important milestone in education system. The performance of examination gives confidence and satisfaction to the students and is a reflection of competence, performance and credibility that is necessary for global acceptability. So the University's Grants Commission stressed for the conducting of uh, terminal examination, final year examinations to be conducted by the end of September 2020. And it could be through online mode or offline mode, but the exam has to be conducted. The students of terminal semester or final year students having backlog should be compulsorily be evaluated by conducting examination in online offline that is a pen and paper method or online or blended both online and offline method as uh, for the convenience of the universities and the students. The decisions of the University Grants Commission for the conducting of uh, uh, this examination was challenged by some of the uh, organizations or individuals because the governments in the states of Maharashtra, Orissa, Punjab, Rajasthana, Haryana, Madhya Pradesh, Kerala and West Bengal took decisions to cancel the examination of final year degree programs considering health and welfare of the students community in spite of UGC guidelines for conduct of exams in the month of September 2020. The states had inst insisted that the decision was taken for the benefit of students. I put it in inverted commas, benefit of students. The decision of the governments were supported by the stu students community or students organization. Petitions were filed before the Supreme Court challenging the guidelines of the U University's Grants Commission. The University's Grants Commission explained the court that Final examination is a crucial step in the academic career of a student and the state government cannot say that the guidelines are not binding due to pandemic. The UGC also explained to the court that the guidelines are based on recommendations of experts and have been made after due deliberations and is uh, wrong to claim that it will be it will not be possible to conduct the final year examination in terms of the guidelines issued by the university's grants commission the supreme court of india backed the regulations of the university's grants commission which has insisted for the conducting for the conduct of uh, uh, final year examinations the court held that examinations are necessary for maintain the standard of higher education and the decision of the UGC is final when it comes to higher education in the country. The states shall approach the university's grants commission if it feels that conduct of examination by the end of September 2020 is difficult due to pandemic, but they cannot cancel the conducting of the examination. They cannot unilaterally decide to postpone the examination without the approval of university's grants commission. No state can graduate final year students without final examination. So the Supreme Court clearly focused on the conduct of examination whereby you can maintain
quality and standard in the higher education the universities grant commission is the body which strives for the quality and uh, standard in the higher education was uh, backed or uh, supported by the supreme court in the petitions filed before it so to conclude we can say that quality and standard of education needs to be regulated effectively to ensure growth of any human society in india the regulatory bodies like ugc bci mci have played key roles in establishment and maintenance of quality in higher education even before pandemic and even during pandemic during this time of pandemic in spite of difficulties and challenges the state could maintain standard in higher education through the regulatory bodies by adopting and implementing necessary measures at appropriate points of time the decisions of the supreme decision of the supreme court of india has strengthened the role of ugc in regulating and maintaining the quality of higher education finally the national education policy of 2020 which is a policy which is uh, having a robust policy capable of catering to unforeseen situations like pandemic the policy emphasizes for technology based education which will help in teaching learning process the ict enabled enabled learning in general and online teaching in particular facilitates the educational process without having to compromise the safety and welfare of various stakeholders so it is important to note here that the government of india through its uh, ministry mhrd and now we call it as ministry of education and ugc tried its best to maintain the quality and standard in education in the indian uh, scenario once again i thank the organizers for uh, giving me an opportunity to uh, share my views with the participants thank you thank you sir over to sir so thank you mr inavali for your speech on the maintenance and regulation of standards in higher education during pandemic times the indian approach we have seen that you covered more of the institutional requirements as far as the regulations are concerned as far as the authorities are concerned and whatever the higher education institutions are governed by the university grants commission uh, professor inavali uh, follow sobre manutenção e regulamentação de padrões do no ensino superior durante tempos de pandemia a uh, abordagem indiana a uh, educação ele diz é um meio importante para o desenvolvimento dos indivíduos e da sociedade o controle ou uh, distribuição da educação por escolas e institutos de ensino superior tornou-se um desafio nesta época da pandemia as instituições de ensino superior na Índia seguem o método tradicional de ensino aprendizagem por meio de palestras em sala de aula e modo offline da realização de exames de fim de semestre embora tenho adotado o aprendizado baseado em tecnologia como meio de transmitir conhecimento. A pandemia de Covid-19 trouxe uma mudança drástica no sistema de ensino superior, tanto na condução das aulas quanto no método de avaliação. Durante o estágio inicial da pandemia, as instituições foram obrigadas a ministrar aulas online para a conclusão do plano de estudos. 
Aulas online e webinars foram realizados pelas instituições com recursos adequados. Instituições sem recursos e estudantes de áreas rurais e de baixa condição econômica enfrentaram dificuldades para adotar esse novo método. Isso continuou mesmo após o início do novo ano acadêmico, que foi no mês de junho. A manutenção da qualidade e do padrão tornou-se um desafio tanto na educação geral quanto na educação profissional na Índia neste momento de pandemia. O Ministério do Desenvolvimento de Recursos Humanos, a University Grants Commission, órgão que controla o ensino superior e outros órgãos estatutários que reconhecem a educação profissional, vinham com orientações de tempos em tempos para reduzir as dificuldades dos alunos, esses órgãos e outros órgãos estudais aconselharam as instituições e realizar o modo online de exame para fins de avaliação. Parte do governo estadual da Índia chegou ao ponto de tomar uma decisão sobre o cancelamento do exame do último ano ou semestre, considerando a saúde e o bem-estar da comunidade de estudantes. Isso ia contra as diretrizes emitidas pela University Grants Commission. Ao rejeitar a petição que, desafia, que desafiava as diretrizes do University Grants Commission, o Supremo Tribunal da Índia enfatizou a manutenção da qualidade e do padrão no ensino superior, mesmo durante a pandemia. Thank you, Professor Inavali. We have a question for you, just one question from Mr. Moses Pinto, who is asking you to enlighten about the references to any statute in the form of circular or ordinance that elucidates the social responsibility of the university. Now, uh, he is also talking about the Companies Act, but with your permission, uh, can I answer this question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Moses, uh, whenever there is a pandemic, the university is always seized uh, of the matter. And uh, this year round, the Goa University enacted a special ordinance and that is known as OS1. So in OS1, all the regular ordinances that govern the programs, like in law colleges, law programs, or in general education, BA, BSc, BCom, those ordinances get suppressed and they get substituted by the special ordinance. So the vice chancellor is empowered by this special ordinance to make necessary changes, including the ways and means for evaluation, uh, change of syllabus, uh, declaration of results, mode of examination, reducing the number of evaluations, no revaluation, re no challenge evaluation. So these are the areas which you would find if you read the special ordinance. As far as Goa is concerned, it is special ordinance uh, OS1. Uh, so OS1, as in this ordinance will be in force as long as the uh, pandemic is on and uh, the governor, who is the chancellor of the Goa University, will have to formally withdraw this uh, special ordinance and then you get back to your regular ordinances. So that we have finished now with uh, both the speeches. Are there any questions that anyone from the audience would like to ask either of the resource persons? either Professor Randall from Unifor or Professor Inavali 
from Govind Ramnath Kare College of Law. If there is anyone, you could in, even either chat or you could even unmute your mic and uh, say so. I I presume we have no more questions because I suppose the speakers were so clear. We had a very clear presentation from Unifor uh, in uh, in visual form. We also had clarity of expression from Professor Inavali. And uh, with that, we come to an end of this uh, very well um, planned uh, webinar. And I would now request uh, Professor Dr. Gina Marsilio Pompeu, who is the coordinator of the master and doctorate in law uh, to give the vote of thanks. Before that, I would like to introduce her. She is the postdoctoral internship holder in law from the University of Lisbon in Portugal in the year 2017. She did a doctorate in law from the Federal University of Pernambuco, which is in 2004. She did a master's in law, that is law and development, from the Federal University of Ceará in 1994. She is a registered lawyer and she is a coordinator and professor of the graduate program in constitutional law of the University of Fortaleza. Uh, she is also uh, in charge of the master's and doctorate program. She is the professor of state constitution and economics. She is a legislative analyst lawyer of the legislative assembly of the state of Ceará, North Region Vice President of the Research and Post-Graduation Council in Law. She is visiting professor of several universities uh, to just give her, to give justice to her in the Portuguese language. I would read out only the most important parts. The professor Dr. Gina is co-ordinator do mestrado e doutorado em direito. Ela é professora de Direito Constitucional. Ela fez estágio pós-doutoral em Direito pela Universidade de Lisboa, em Portugal, uh, 2017, e doutorado em di Direito pela Universidade Federal de Pernambuco, em 2004, mestrado em Direito, direito e Desenvolvimento pela Universidade Federal do Ceará, em 1970. Uh, 94. Uh, Professor Dr. Gina, the word is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Sabah. And more than this, I'm Sabah's friend. So it's a very, I'm very happy to be with you in this morning. And in the in behalf of the University of Fortaleza and the Master and Doctorate Program Constitutional Law. I would like to thank you, the Carey College of Law and Goa University for the possibility of holding this highly relevant debate for the university community and for society. It is our duty, duty as a citizen and as a researcher to seek solution to minimize pain and suffering in the face of the COVID pandemic. The year of 2020 was marked by suffering, resignation, and overcoming. It is necessary to maintain the quality of education, but also the students, teachers, employers need hope, comfort, and resilience. This is our challenge. So UNIFOR and CARRE College together show solidarity and fraternity and, and goodwill together to achieve the necessary strength to overcome this storm. So, Professor, I would like to very much to thank Professor Varun Sami, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nichi Kunko Lienkar. Professor Shiracha Ivali and Professor Randal Pompeo, also Professor Sabah, that to, in this morning could give us a chance to think together uh, this necessary maintenance of quality of education and also 
uh, try to overcome body and spirit because the university tripe undergraduate, graduate and extension must survive together. So thank you, Professor Sabah, for sharing with the University of Fortaleza uh, and all of our students this way that Professor Inavali show us the, the need to maintain the quality of our effort to, to make this uh, overcoming this difficult year. And Professor Randall Pompeo, I'm very proud to, to be part of the University of Fortaleza. And I would like to, uh, to congratulate all your team uh, in the social, social responsibility sector for the implementation of beautiful actions within the scope of municipality of Fortaleza. I wish you all hope and wisdom to renew dreams and projects. May 2001, uh, 2001, keep us together and maybe we can continue together this beautiful work. I truly wish. I wish God protect us and so we can uh, begin a new year uh, with more wisdom and with more uh, strength to uh, overcome all uh, this very difficult year that was 2002. Uh, this year was very difficult for the law professors uh, and also to the, our university. And uh, it's fraternity way of Professor Sabah and Professor Mario Monte that keep us still crying, that still uh, thinking that it's possible to do something more in a way of teachers and learning. Uh, so I'm very happy to be with you this morning. And for you, I know that uh, it's late, uh, but I hope that we have a, a lot of other actions together in the next year. Uh, I wish you a very good end of the year and God bless all us, Professor Sabah. Uh, thank you, Professor Dr. Regina. I would just add a little more to your vote of thanks because it is my bounden duty to recognize the efforts of our institution in hosting this program. So we had Professor Rosanna Correa, who is the assistant professor in law. And with her team, we also had Mr. Anand Salve, who is the librarian. Bibliothecario, bibliothecario, you call him, right? Then we had the um, technical assistance from Mr. Abhijit Rege, as also from Mr. Rupesh Shirodkar. And of course, I thank Mr. Nitin Kunkolekar, who is the president of our educational trust, chairman of our governing council, and uh, um, so many others who were here today, besides, of course, the resource persons. Professor Randall and Professor Inavali. I too wish all of you a, a, a happy uh, Christmas, which is coming shortly, and a very fruitful New Year 2021. You are for to the alegria, the realizações. E que tenhamos muita paz e saúde. Obrigado. Thank you very much. Amém, professor. Muito <laughs> obrigada. Thank you, ma'am. Muito obrigado. Thank obrigado. You very much. Obrigado. Adeus. Adeus. Obrigado. <laughs>